who served on the White House Council of Economic Advisors. It's been another year where a cost of living crisis and affordability crisis has been troubling many Americans as it has around the world. But if we focus just here on the situation in the U.S., is next year likely to be any better? Well, I think people realize that the inflation is coming down in 2023 and people are expecting that to continue into uh, 2024. What has been the troublesome issue in the U.S. is that incomes have not kept up with inflation. So your real purchasing power of your earnings or your wages have gone down. People, the paycheck of people don't reach as far. And that's been the real sort of cost of living crisis that we've had the last couple of years in the U.S. But yet at the same time, unemployment has been at a record low as well. Do you think broadly speaking, and I know you were working under President Trump in his White House, but broadly speaking, do you think Bidenomics has been working? No, I don't think so, because, I mean, if you look at the labor market, yes, there's low unemployment, but, you know, the, the number of people who enter the labor market in the U.S. every month or so is about 100 or 200,000. That is nothing compared to the 160 million or so people in the labor market, and they have basically experienced lower standards of living. So it's great that we have more people in the labor market, but the vast majority of them were there before, and their standard of living has decreased. So the way the economists think of this is the quantity of labor has gone up, but the price of labor, that is to say wages, have gone down. And that's the troublesome aspect, which was very different from during the uh, pre-pandemic Trump years, where we had uh, large growth, particularly in the low income uh, part of the dis income distribution in the U.S. And that situation you describe with the wages not keeping pace with cost of living, is that why we've seen so much sort of activism in the labor market or in labor movement in 2023? So much trade union activism, so many protests, so many strikes. Yeah, there's been a tight labor market, meaning that job openings have been way above the number of people who want to go to work. And part of that has partly been attributable that we paid people a lot, even if they were not working in terms of benefits, particularly during COVID, COVID but even after COVID. So the sort of advantage to people's income if they lose those benefits when they go to work has been less than it's been in the past. So that keeps labor supply uh, held back, essentially. And when labor supply is held back, there's a tight labor market. There's more demand for labor than, uh, than supply. That has given sort of unions the room to operate in some sense because, you know, you can't have a union when you have a lot of uh, uh, unemployment in the, in the economy because people are just going to go elsewhere. But that's given them the stage to operate as they currently are. Now, another issue looking at the U.S. economy is that we've seen um, high mortgage rates continuing. What impact is that having in the longer term on the housing market and on the broader economy? Yeah, so you've seen an enormous inflation, if you think of that, in the price of uh, credit, uh, if you think of uh, sort of the, how much you pay to borrow money. It's reduced the demand for housing. Obviously, people don't want to buy a house when the price of when it's much more expensive to borrow money. But also, it's reduced the supply, which is very important. People don't want to leave their houses in the U.S. because they had such good mortgage rates during COVID when there were very, very small mortgage or low mortgage rates. And now they don't want to go out and buy another house and have a double or triple uh, the size of their mortgage. So both supply and demand has gone down, which means the volume of houses traded has been reduced dramatically. However, prices of houses have remained elevated. That's because when demand goes down, price goes down, but when the supply goes down, price goes up. So it seems like the supply, the reduction in supply has been more important because counterintuitively in this economy, prices of houses have gone up, even though the purpose of the Federal Reserve raising interest rate is for inflation to go down. So in the most credit sensitive market, uh, in the economy, housing, increasing interest rates have actually raised prices as opposed to lower them. And that's a big deal in the U.S. because housing prices is about 40 percent of, of our inflation measure. And Thomas, just a final question then. When we talk about the economy of a country, we're talking about all those indicators that we've been discussing for the last few moments, but also things like health standards and longevity. What's your overall assessment of the picture of the U.S. economy as we close out this year? 
Well, it's looking better than we than when we started 20, 2023, for sure. But it's a lot worse than pre-pandemic, put it that way. So I think the reason the Biden administration is getting so low rankings on how they have favored or how they have steered the economy is because people still have in mind the 2018, the 2019 economy had enormous gains in wages and real wages, purchasing power of wages for workers, uh, low interest rates and other aspects of policy, not necessarily only economic policy. Our border was much more secure at the time. We didn't have any wars. Now we're in two wars, essentially. So I think a lot of people are frustrated with what has happened after COVID when they compare it to 2018, 19, and, and 17 to 19, essentially. OK, we leave it there for the moment. Thomas Phillipson, the former acting chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisers under President Trump, thanks indeed for joining us on BBC News. Thank you.